Standard Paper, all the latest. Read all about it. New Star Standard Paper, all the latest. Read all about it. New Star Standard Paper. 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 New Star Standard. Seven to four, so Brian does it again. Paper. Read all about it. New Star Standard Paper, all the latest. Read all about it. New Star my lord, members of the jury, the prosecutor knows that he cannot condemn the prisoner for murder. Murder is ugly. It is premeditated, thought out, planned. She told her husband, but he refused to understand. He shut his mind and his heart. Are we now to condemn those unfortunates who, through some twist of fate, suddenly find themselves swept away by love? Is there not enough hate in this world? Have we no room left in our hearts for faith? Faith in ourselves. Surely. Gentlemen, we must have faith. He doesn't look at all well. He doesn't look at all well. We may not have much of anything else, but we must have faith. <laughs> And the doctors won't let anyone see Brian. This is a liberty impertinent. My own brother. I'm sorry, but they don't want him to be disturbed. I'm sure that if you ring back later tonight... I'll do no such thing. Is that the car, Simmons? Yes, sir, they're here. Where's Dr. McCutcheon? He's with Sir Brian, my lady. Oh, May. Have you seen Brian? I have not, as you very well know. Perhaps you would be kind enough to allow one of your servants to telephone me and inform me of his condition. May. Brian's sister. Michael, how is he? Restless. He's been asking for you. This is Brian's colleague, Mr. Barclay, Dr. Torvald. How do you do? I can tell you, we're very glad you're here, Doctor. You've got to help him, Doctor. You've got to. Of course. Nanny's been with Brian since he was born. Kathy, may I come up with you? Eric? Later. I must get back now. Uh, Simmons, could you find my hat? Oh, Kathy. Try and stop Brian worrying about business. Greg and I can take care of everything. Now, I'll be at Chambers till midnight, so if there's anything I can do for you, just call me. Yes. And I do hope you'll be able to get some sleep tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Michael. Good night, Moore. the optic discs, nor with the refractory media. The cause is not visual tract. No, I could write. The course is higher up. It's like with Jenny Gambliopia. What's going on? Eric, what's going on? You must be calm, Brian. We are trying to help you. You must not excite yourself. A new diagnosis, eh? Well, let's have it. Drops, please. Where's Kathy? Are you there, McCutcheon? Yes, sir, man. It won't hurt. Oh, I'm not afraid of pain. If you don't mind, I want to speak to my wife. Where is she? Kathy? Friend, you must try to understand. When you strain nature as you have done, you must pay a penalty. Some pay with their minds, others with their eyes. Someone came in. Is that you, Kathy? Yes, Brian. What is it, darling? These gentlemen are experimenting with my eyes. I want you to stay with me. Yes, but he should sleep now. Oh, I can't sleep. Please. Just for a little while. <laughs> How can I sleep? I'm much too busy. That poor woman. I've got to go back. Six o'clock. 
six months. Not being able to see all that time? Yes, with you as his nurse, you and you alone. What is it you want to say? I... May I tell you? You are thinking that six months is like a prison sentence. Not for me, for Brian. You haven't seen him for ten years. He's changed since those pleasant days in Cafe. Very much changed. His work has become an obsession. It's all he lives for. Sickness does not come only from the body. What has happened to Brian's sight is just a symptom. That is why medicine alone will not cure him. He can't be dependent on me or on anyone. He's the most independent man in the world. All that restless vitality. It is up to you. There is just one consideration now. If Brian should lose his sight permanently, he would be dead within a year, that kind of a man. So whether he lives or dies is in your hands. I'll do anything you say. An immediate change is necessary. You must go away with him and you must be with him constantly. Is that understood? Yes. Now the daughter Monica. You are sympathetic, I can see that. I couldn't love her more if she were my own. She was seven years old when I married Brian. I brought her up. When you go away with Brian, I'm... I'm wondering if she should go with you. May I come in? Forgive me. I couldn't wait. Daddy, will he, will he be all right? Dr. Torval says he'll be well in six months, if we keep him from worrying. We're going to go away with him, you and I. Oh, darling, I'm so glad he's got you. I'm so glad I've got you. Such a thing. Well, post office. Officio postale. Bravo. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't ask me for the Commissioner of Industry and Agriculture. <laughs> now wait here. Uh -huh. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, signora. Prego, si posso fare noi? Si, sì, molto posto per lei, signora. Ecco. Grazie. Come sta il signore? He asked how you feel. Oh, molto bene, grazie. Arrivederla. Arrivederla. All right. Yes. Much mail? A rich haul, darling. You know, it occurs to me that I was not very well acquainted with you in London. Perhaps we should have taken this holiday years ago. What's this? A bill from Hatchet. You like opening them, don't you? I've got to make myself useful. Fun for the education of savage people. This is one charity that should be given at home. Oh. Send them a check. A catalog for miracle elastic splendorizing undergarments. Are you interested? <laughs> I'm interested in everything these last few weeks. Now, if you want me to read your mail... <laughs> the efficient secretary, the incomparable nurse. What's this? A letter. From whom? There's no signature. Oh, anonymous. I get them sometimes. Hmm? Dear Sir Brian Brooks, please excuse me venturing to trouble you without having the pleasure of your acquaintance. Certainly. It is a sense of moral duty which forces me to open your eyes. You will be interested to learn. Go on, Cassie. 
Why? What's the matter? Why don't you go on? O'Brien, it's a disgusting letter. Anonymous letters generally are, but go on, read it. We should ignore it. Why? I'm the best judge of that after I've heard it. Let me tear it up. Look here. If I think that you're suppressing mail that comes for me... But a thing like this? Read it, Cassie. Well, what good will it do? It's only vile abuse. It might be the sort of thing I'd send to the public prosecutor. No. Well, I can't tell till I've heard it. It would only upset you for nothing. I'm not so easily upset. I've had this sort of thing before. What does it say? Is it obscene? Yes. I really can't read it, Brian. Is it criminally libelous? Any accusation? No. There's nothing for the police. I'd best make sure of that. Let me have it. Michael will be here this week, and I'll turn it over to him. Oh, you mustn't do that. I want you to read it, Cathy. Go ahead, or I'll tear off this bandage, and I'll read it myself. I mean that. Very well. I'll read it. Good. You will be interested to learn. Go on. You will be interested to learn that you are the only person in London who does not know of the relations between your wife and Michael Barclay, whom you think is your friend. Everybody is laughing at you, but there are none so blind as those that will not see. Is that all? Yes. Have you read every word? Yes. Thank you. You said it was obscene. So it is. There's nothing in it you couldn't have read aloud. Nothing in it. On the other hand, it does contain a libel. You said it did not. I'm sorry. I have an illegal mind. You didn't want to read it, did you? Your whole attitude was one of avoiding. Why, Cathy? It isn't the way of an innocent person. In the eyes of a court, you'd be condemned. Am I in a court now? Did you know that this scandal was going about? Certainly not. Why do you suppose they picked out Michael? I haven't the faintest idea. You can't imagine any possible reason? No. But I don't understand why you're taking it like this. It's not pleasant to be told that I'm a laughingstock. The whole thing's a lie. A cowardly lie sent to you by someone who has a grudge against you. Why don't you forget it? First you said it was obscene, it was not, and then you denied a libel. Your reaction wasn't one of an innocent person. Surely you don't believe. I suppose it's because I can't see you, but I don't believe that you're speaking the truth. Brian! Is he in love with you? You seem to have some difficulty in answering that question. The letter is true, isn't it? It's a lie, from beginning to end. A vicious lie. I tried to spare you the humiliation of listening to it, because I knew I'd be forced to tell you something I hadn't wanted to tell you, something I'd been asked not to tell you and swore I wouldn't. That letter couldn't possibly be true. Because the fact is, Michael is in love with Monica. Very much in love with her. And Monica is in love with him. Michael and Monica. Good heavens, I've never noticed. Did you ever notice anything before, except your work? You were always too busy to care what went on in your own house. Kathy. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. And I'm deeply ashamed. Give me the letter. Yes, that's right. If anything should happen to us... Nothing will happen to us. Oh, I can't tell you how happy this makes me. Michael, nothing could please me more. And you've kept it from me all this time. Michael asked me not to say anything. My junior partner, keeping confidences from me. When he gets here, I'll give him the devil. Oh, Brian, please don't. It's a secret. He'd be terribly angry if he thought I'd said anything. Oh, all right. I won't say anything. Promise? Promise. But I'll certainly mention it when the proper time comes. Signora, il pranzo è servito. Lunch. Lead me to it. I can understand that in any language. <laughs> I should like to see Michael's face when he learns that I knew his secret all along. 
È arrivato ieri sera, lo ha tenuto in tasca fino adesso. L'ha dimenticato in tasca. Signora, mi scusi, ma siccome mi sono cambiato la giacca, non dimenticato. Di vergognarsi, dimenticare i tuoi doveri. Datemelo, per favore. Bugardo, piacerone. Si dorme davanti a tutti, si fa che he forgot to give us this cable which arrived last night. It's from Michael. It is. That old six cents, is he coming? He's practically here. This was sent from London yesterday morning. His plane was due to arrive in Naples at one o'clock. He's taking a motorboat over. And what time is it? Three o'clock. Well, he'll be arriving any moment now. Monica must go and meet him. Monica isn't here. She went to Anna Capri for the afternoon. Somebody must. Yes, I'll have to go myself. All right, darling, you go and meet him. I'll order the dinner tonight, the sort of feast that this occasion calls for. stay away from you any longer. Something terrible has happened. We can't talk here. Have you any idea who wrote the letter? No. Well, the harm's done. In a way, this makes it easier for us. Easier? Darling, why do you think I'm here? Why do you think I've got that boat waiting and then two plane tickets for Paris? This is all crazy. It's beautifully crazy. You know Brian's condition. Any shock would make him permanently blind. If that happened, he wouldn't live a year. Do you know how long it's been since I've seen you? We can't talk about that now. Yes, we can. You're leaving with me. I've arranged everything. We'll get away from England. We'll find somewhere to live. I want to make up to you for the bad times you've had. And you would, I know that. But it's too late. Kathy! That day in London when I told you I could never see you again. You didn't mean it. I did, I had to. Everything's finished for us. What do you mean? Do you think this is easy for me? When I first came here, I didn't think I could go through with it. But I had to. I'm not going to let you go on wasting your life on a, on a man who never had a thought for anyone but himself. I'm going to go to him and tell him. After the explanation I gave him about the letter, it would kill him. What did you say then? I was frantic. I clutched at the first thing that came to my mind. I told him that you were in love with Monica, and that Monica was in love with you. Monica? I know. But Please try to understand. You, possibly? you must help me. You must. While you're here, be attentive to her. It's the only but way I've Brian will ever... I've always like a child. I... That's the way I think of her. I... I couldn't possibly. We've got to see this through. I'm sorry, Kathy. No. Michael. You don't love me. There's something I must put ahead of love. A man's life. Please. Brian's asleep. Giovanni will show you to your room. Darling, this is impossible for both of us. I can't do it. You promised. Oh, darling, you can't do that. Michael's first night here. 
Michael's nothing to me. After all, he's your property. My property? Yours and a father's. He seems to prefer to belong to your generation. You mean that you dislike Michael? I, I don't care enough to dislike him. You don't say that very convincingly. Don't I? How would you like it if someone you... Someone always called you Moo, as if you were a child. Someone who never looked at you unless you practically bumped into him. And when he writes to father about some stuffy law case, I'm nothing but a postscript at the bottom of the letter. My kindest regards to Moo. What am I supposed to do? Jump with joy because he's come to stay with us? I can't wait to hear him say, Hello, Moo. Is it as bad as that? I don't want to see him. I wish he weren't here. But he is here. I hate him. Darling. I do. I hate him. That is true. You don't hate him. I should go and find out what's become of our guest. Mr. Barclay, the barrister. Hello, Boo. I knew you'd arrived when I saw a line of lonely women forming in the public square. Well, Moo, you're, you're certainly looking very fit. Still running through to form. Why don't you go all out and tell me I've grown since the last time you saw me? I believe you have. Actually, you're much prettier. How nice of you. Not at all. Have you seen Father? Not yet. He'll be awake now and demanding your presence. I'll take you to him. You know, you really need a guy to find your way around this fabulous villa. Can you imagine Dr. Traval giving it to us for the summer? How long could you stay? Only a few days, I'm afraid. I hope I'll see you occasionally. We might have tea sometime. Come along. I'll take you to Father. Father? Monica? There's someone with you, Michael? Yes. Come down. Come down. How are you, Brian? I'd say I'm glad to see you if it weren't slightly inaccurate, but I'm glad you arrived at last. Monica and I have been waiting for you. Oh, and she's put on her most expensive perfume in your honor. How does she look? Full of health. Unless she's blushing. I should think I might. Well, Capri seems to agree with you too, Brian. Enormously, and Cathy has been wonderful. She's been my eyes. I couldn't get along without her. Now, sit down, sit down. How's London? Weather's been pretty hot. Oh, well, you won't cool off here. But a good barrister can adjust himself to anything, eh? Michael says he's leaving in a few days. Absolute rot. Time is something for other people to worry about. 
I, for one, am delighted to have you here, so that we can get to know each other, which I regret was never possible in the rush of London. And as for certain members of my family... And what do you mean by that? A blind man, my child, sees through a brick wall more quickly than most people. I've a bit of news for you, Brian. Um, Ellsworth's gone to Court of Appeal. No shot, my boy, no shot. Monica would never forgive us. Darling, ring the bell so that we can drink a proper welcome to Michael. I hope you'll like Capri half as much as I do. It's given me a new lease of life. You're down early. Dinner isn't until... I had to see you. What's this? I knew you liked it. You may as well have it. Carved opal from Nyberg. Thank you. You don't believe that opals are unlucky? How could anything so beautiful be unlucky? That's a debatable point. Don't be bitter. What do you expect me to be? I refuse to let you stay here, making a slave of yourself for a, for a completely selfish man. Don't make me say it, Michael. Are you being completely unselfish? Is anyone? All I know is the only reason I came here is because I love you. I told you. I beg you to believe me. Everything's finished for us. I hope you realize the consequences. I have no choice, have I? Then it's time I make the choice for us. Kathy! Where are you? Yes, Brian. Do you want anything? I went into your room. You weren't there. Have my cigars arrived? Yes. I put them in the humidor. Oh, good. I expect Michael likes a cigar after dinner. How's he looking? Very well. Ah, it's a great pleasure having you here. Shall we go out and dress? I'm dressed. Oh. But you aren't. You'd better hurry. You have no idea how much I miss you when you're not with me. Yes. But it's late. You'd better dress. Come up and talk to me while I dress. If I do, you'll never get ready. Well, wouldn't you like to talk to me? Yes, darling. <laughs> the cigars were only an excuse. To be quite honest, I really want to find you. Oh, what's your religion is a an economic center of the city. And from fear life gravitated about this one great area. Facing the temple at the south end of the fall, we come to the magnificent... I think this is the best place. Oh. You know, this looks as if it might have been a bar, but apparently the license has expired. Oh, oh I wouldn't give for a cold drink right now. Just think, you know, 2,000 years ago, we could have been served the most wonderful, cool drinks. Perhaps right in this very spot. Cold drinks, sir? I don't believe it. Will lemonade do? Oh. Oh. You know, you're a very remarkable woman. How long can you stay? Here indefinitely. No, I mean with us and Catherine. Oh. Not so very long. Thank you. I've got some very important cases coming up. But Father distinctly said not to bother about any old cases. Did he? You've been working very hard and you do need a rest. Everybody says so. Besides, I believe there's the most horrible heat wave in London. Happy? Well, contented then. Very. I'm extremely happy. Shall I tell you why? Yes, do. Because for the last two days, you haven't called me more. And that means you no longer think of me as more. How do you want me to think of you? 
Oh, I didn't really mean anything. Of course you've got a lovely diamond. A man with a clever brain. If I could stay here for a year and have a lesson from you every day. Oh, yes, I should like that very much. I wonder if they're expecting us for lunch at the villa. I meant to tell them we'd be back at 1.30. Lucia, do you think you could go up and tell them? I'd rather stay here. Oh, could you? That's very sweet of you. Thank you, dear. All right. See you tomorrow. You've certainly got it up there in a hurry. Well, if you want to know the truth, I was jealous. Jealous? It happens to people sometimes, you know. Well, of all the... <laughs> Just... That's right. Nothing like a good hearty laugh to clear the brain. That clever brain of yours that Lucia was gushing about. You're not leaving for London. I'm you? going to put on a dry suit if it's of any interest to you. All bathing suits, Miss Brooke, of interest to the entire island. For instance, look at the old man with the binoculars. Heavens, where? Oh, I'm sorry. It isn't an old man. It's a goat. But he looks like a sophisticated goat. You will have your little joke, and it certainly was a little one. I shan't be a minute. You have no heart, have you? What? The way you laughed at me a moment ago. The typical cold-blooded Englishman. My dear, I wasn't laughing at you. I was laughing at myself. Oh. Besides, haven't you heard? There's a movement afoot to prove that Englishmen are not cold-blooded. Then what is the matter with them? We won't go into that. But they definitely aren't cold-blooded. According to science, Englishmen are so highly sentimental that in their frantic efforts to conceal it from themselves, they appear to be cold-blooded. It's really very simple. According to science. you feel that way. I do too. Can you believe it was only two weeks ago we made our expedition to Pompeii? We've scarcely seen Father and Catherine. I'm afraid I've been wretchedly selfish keeping you all to myself. That was the way I wanted it. Really? Really. The days have gone so fast. Fourteen incredible days. A period of discovery, as the history books say. And what have you discovered? Oh, lots of things. Such as? Such as that I'm going to miss you like the little devil when I get back to London. You will? Monica! Monica! They're waiting for lunch! What? Less than your usual frantic half minute. Isn't it odd when you meet a man you want to be punctual for? Oh, I wish Father would omit those sly hints about matrimony. His touch is as delicate as a hippopotamus. Here. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Enough to put Michael off. I'm sure that's why he was so sulky and glum the first two days. Has Michael said anything? Oh, not in so many words, but he's going to. Any minute now, a woman can tell. And when he does, I shall rush straight to you with the glad tidings. Oh, look at my hair. Oh, dear. Oh, what am I going to do? Maybe I could borrow a pair of your earrings. Catherine, you're very quiet tonight. You haven't given me any great opportunity to talk. I suppose I am rather gabby. Being in love is not easy on the nerves. Is it new? I've never seen it before. No, it's very old. 18th century. The man you were in love with gave it to you? Why do you say that? Just intuition. They say opals are unlucky. You shouldn't believe in superstition. Things aren't unlucky. Opals are broken mirrors. We cause our own bad fortune. 
Could you help me with this ribbon? Yes, darling. Compare? Si, signore. Care to have one? No, thank you. As a matter of fact, I haven't had a drink in a week. Haven't had a drink in a week? <laughs> what do you attribute it to? Character or climate? Climate, I'm sure. <laughs> What's this about your leaving? Well, I must be in London on the 7th. Nonsense. You're enjoying Capri, aren't you? Oh, yes, of course, but the, the Ellsworth case is coming up. What about the Michael Barclay case? You're entitled to a holiday, and Cathy and I like having you here, not to mention Monica. Well, yes, but... Don't you... forget, your fate is in my hands. I'll cable London that you're staying. Was I terribly long? Yes, but it was worth waiting for. Does she look lovely? Beautiful. We're late as usual. Thank you, darling. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Father. Good night, my love. Good night, Brian. Good night. Have a good time. I hope you'll have dinner outdoors. There's a moon tonight. Michael! Bring her home by midnight. She's been very late this week. I'll do my best. He always does as you tell him. Don't you, Michael? Always. My rule, queen to king's knight, too. Cassie, queen to king's knight, too. Verdict. You've made wonderful progress. Beyond my expectations. I'll have another look in three weeks and then we can take off the bandage. I shan't try to thank you. Don't thank me, my dear Brian. You might thank God and Kathy. In that order? Yes. I'm changing the prescription. Mm. Yes? You wanted to say something? It's about Cassie. This has been an ordeal for her. I... I have a feeling that she is not happy. Cathy is tired, naturally. Yes, but have you noticed she's not happy? A long illness makes the imagination like an over-sharp knife on which one is apt to cut oneself. I'll find Kathy and give her a prescription. entitled to see the documents. Yes. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, that's not good enough. Uh, yes. Yes. 
Yes. Oh, did they? Well, I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. Darling, I, I think I should take out a summons. I said I think I should take out a summons. Goodbye. Oh, oh great help to a struggling legal mind. Why struggle? You may be right. What's your name? Brooke. Monica Brooke. Spinster of this parish. You'll have to do something about that. When? I beg your pardon? I have no shame. I said when. Oh, well, let me see. Ah, let's see. No, Monday, busy, busy. Sorry, shan't have time to get married this week. Too many important things to do. Well, you better make it soon. Father was frantic with disappointment when you left Capri without declaring honorable intentions. Was he? <laughs> no, not really. But I think Kathy was. Why do you say that? Mm, just my astonishing intuition. Isn't that a lovely photograph of her? Yes. No wonder Father fell in love with her. I should think any man would. Don't you agree? Yes, of course. Do you think I'm anything at all like her? People have said so, you know, and it, it always thrills me to hear it. Does she know we're engaged? I think she guesses. I didn't tell her because she'd have felt she must tell Father. They have no secrets from each other. Well, it's nice to have met you, Miss Brooke. I suppose you realize you're keeping me from my work, disrupting our entire organization. Darling. Yes? Take the day off. What? Oh, not possible. You aren't in court today. You told me so last night. Darling, I, I just don't take days off. Please, Michael. It's important. Why? What do you want to do? Just for you to take the day off. It's symbolic. Our whole future depends on it. Symbolic of what? Of our marriage. No, I'm serious. What happened to Kathy shall not happen to me. For five years, she saw nothing of Father. Then his health broke down. And for months, she had to be a ministering angel 24 hours a day. And now that he's well again, I suppose she'll be put back on the shelf. Poor Kathy. I see. I know your work is important. And I'll do my best to help you. And I'll be a good wife. But if you treat me as father's treated Kathy... Come on. Let's go. Angel. You're an insidious woman. If it isn't too much to ask, have you any idea where you're going? I have an errand to do for Catherine. Oh, here's the shop. Nyberg's. Oh, uh... I'll wait outside, shall I? Oh, no. Come in with me. Good morning, Miss Brooke. Mr. Bartley, you're looking very fit today, sir. Good morning. I've come for Lady Brooke's ring. It was sent to be reset. Certainly, Miss Brooke. We have it ready. The second drawer. Michael, do look at these seals. Oh, Mr. Bartley, I've got a piece of news for you about that carved opal you bought from us. I find it's mentioned in ancient gems. Quite a history. It was in the Monte Verde family. I copied out the particulars. Yes, sir. I thought you'd like to see them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Nyberg. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Brooke. Goodbye. Mr. Barclay. What opal was he speaking of? It's a thing I bought last year. Wedding present, actually. Catherine has a carved opal. A very lovely one. Oh, really? What do you say we have lunch? Patience, darling. After all, I did go with you to buy your new hat. Now I ask you. But I must tell you about Catherine's opal. In Capri, I was going through a jewel case, looking for something neat, but not gaudy to pinch myself. And I saw the opal. Catherine was so embarrassed about it. So I cross-examined her in the best broke manner, and she admitted it had romantic associations. Did she really? Now, can I cross-examine you about lunch? Oh, darling, we've only one more place to go to. something I must tell you. Something I wouldn't want Sybil to know or anyone. I've made a terrible discovery. I've forgotten how to tie my tie. Much as I'd rather be alone with you tonight, I'm glad we're giving this party. Do you know why? Why? Beginning of an era. Before, I invited only clients, I'm ashamed to say. But now, tonight, we've invited only the people we like. With the glaring exception of my sister, and that was your doing. We had to invite May. But why? He throws cold water over any party. 
Cold water mixed with a considerable amount of gin. <laughs> well, she's your sister. Don't remind me, and why should you be so tolerant? Simmons, where's the ride? He's having a look at the wines, Melinda. Thank you. Kathy! Do you like my dress? Perfect, darling. I hope you don't mind me borrowing your opal. But my seed pearls were absolutely lost, so I dipped into your jewel case and came up with this. Good evening. Here's my car. Hello. When I'm ready on time, you can believe it's love. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello, Kathy. Where did you get that? I borrowed it from Kathy. It's the one I was telling you about. Don't look so disapproving. I hope you're not going to tell me I'm too young to wear jewelry. After all, I'll soon be an old married woman, and I can wear a tiara if somebody will buy me one. Hello, Michael. Good to see you. Good to be here, Brian. Uh -huh. Don't tell me that I'm the first guest. Yes, you are, and that's as it should be. You agree, Monica? I should have to think about it. <laughs> Good evening, Michael. Of course, I said. I know I'm only a poor relation. Nevertheless, I do. Coffee, miss? Don't you want me to enjoy your party, Catherine? Coffee's so bad for the liver. As you please. Thank you. Mark? You're looking slightly distrait, darling. What's the matter? Me. Oh, I told you we shouldn't have asked him. Shouldn't you take it a bit easy? Don't be tired. I was only George. thinking. Well, don't think. It's not becoming to you, Mark. Dear chap, if you want women to listen to you, never marry them. In fact, I came over to listen to you. May was remarking what a happy family gathering this is. How monstrously impertinent of her to invite him to my brother's house. John, what are you backing in this ledger? My life. Oh, Michael, come and tell us about Catherine. I don't like the look of this. Did you stay with the Brooks the whole time? Yes. Is Kathy as romantic as one hears? I suppose so, yes. But not romantic for Brown, who couldn't see. Husbands as seldom do. What an old-fashioned remark, Miss. Merely a sweeping generality. Well, do sit down. Tell me, what good works have you been engaged in lately? Kathy's looking well, don't you think, Michael? Romantic Kathy must have agreed with her, too. We were just envying Kathy having Michael for a whole month as her guest at Kathy. Really, she has all the luck. Whatever luck Kathy has, she deserves. Shall we join the ladies? I'm sure you'll excuse us. I'm never sure whether Sybil is kind-hearted or merely stupid. Lucy would say it was one and the same thing. Do you think she knows about Kathy? If she doesn't, she's a fool. Everybody in London knows about it. Speak to her, man. She'll listen to you. <laughs> it's my brother I'm sorry for. Nobody's such a fool as he. Be quiet. I've been quiet long enough. That's not an entirely accurate statement. Your voice has remarkable carrying power. Tell them to bring back the brand. If I were you, I shouldn't have more. Well, you're not me, I'm pleased to say. Be a good girl. Poor George is worried about you. Poor George. He's as much influence over me as you have over your wife. May, you're being silly. I'm not the one that's being silly. I'm sure you don't mean to behave badly, May. Why don't you keep your smug advice for someone who really has behaved badly? What do you mean by that? The doctors didn't really cure your blindness, did they? I fail to find that amusing, May. I dare say you don't find yourself amusing, but others do. Half the people in this room are laughing at you.
Yes. I must ask you to explain that curious remark. I'm your only friend, Brown. You said half the people in that room were laughing at me. What did you mean, Mother? You don't know. Why should I be the one to tell you? Tell me what? I refuse to be dragged into this. Dragged into what? Why'd you question me? Go and question your wife. What has she got to do with it? Ask Michael Barclay that. <laughs> I didn't want to tell you. A sense of moral duty forces me to... Sense of moral duty? That was in the letter. It was you. You wrote that letter. I did not. I did not. You did it. You're hurting me. Tell me the truth. You know you're lying. Yes, I wrote that letter. Someone had to bring you to your senses. Your friends know it's true. Leave my house. Get out! I shall be pleased to. Come along, George. My brother has asked us to leave his house. I'm terribly sorry for that. Simmons, more champagne for everyone. Where's May? May? She's not well. She's left us. Is anything wrong, darling? What could be wrong? The party's just getting underway. See that everyone's glasses charged quickly. Yes, sir. No, not for her ladyship. What's happening? You'll soon see. This will be a night to remember. I have always made speeches for my clients, never on behalf of myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. But as tonight is an occasion marking an unusual milestone in my life... Oh, are you having a birthday, Brian? Well, I repeat, it is an occasion. And I welcome this opportunity to pay tribute to a remarkable woman. My wife. I know you all love Kathy. You love her in varying degrees, naturally, but you love her. How could you help it? And this fact makes my task doubly pleasant. I said just now that I wish to pay a tribute to Kathy. Actually, it's something more than a tribute. I am acknowledging a debt to her. A debt which I shall repay, I assure you. No one knows what I owe to Kathy. Not only because she nursed me, brought me back to health. I can tell you, darkness is not easy to live in, except where there is a light somewhere. And I had that light in Kathy. So I ask you to join me in a toast to one who embodies the virtues of those other good and gracious ladies. Martha, the biblical symbol of domesticity. Calpurnia, Caesar's wife. And above all, the faithful Penelope. To Cathy. You tell Shall I? Yes, go on, Jen. Brian? Oh, Brian? Yes, Jen? As it's an occasion, you know you said it was. There's another toast that should be proposed. And only you can do it, Brian. How about a toast to the engaged couple? Oh, no, please. Engaged? Really? <laughs> Monica and Michael. It's up to you to announce it, Brian. What's this? Oh, 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 Very well. Give her ladyship a glass. Thank <laughs> you. 
What is a man to say when his only child is to marry a fellow who... a fellow who is such a valued friend of the family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, this is even more of an occasion. My daughter and Michael Barclay. <laughs> we must perpetuate these tribal customs. <laughs> Monica, as you're going to leave me, I wish you immense happiness. In a world that enjoys so little, now, Kathy, come along. It's your turn. You must welcome this fortunate man into the family. Come along. Yes, yes, go on, Kathy. Yes, 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 this extraordinarily lucky man, Michael Barclay, is to have even more good luck. He will no longer be associated with me as a barrister. With deep regret, I am forced to announce the severance of our professional relations. I can only say that I wish him all the good fortune he deserves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best of luck, old boy. Why didn't you tell me? I can't explain now. Please, 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 will you? Please, we must have some music upstairs. Oh, it doesn't matter anything as long as it's gay. Oh, well, as this is a sentimental party, let's give him the works, boys. Could you please find my hat and coat? I must. It's very late. I've got some work to do. Darling. I, I just didn't want to bother people saying good night. Thank you. Why didn't you tell me your association with Father is finished? I'll telephone you in the morning. Darling, what's the matter? You seem awfully strange. I'm just tired, that's all. I want you to know one thing, I love you. Nothing will ever change that. Am I? Or mad? That's quite possible. If you can't get him back, Kathy can do it. Oh, yes, you can get him back, can't you? <laughs> you can get him back. You can get him back. Catherine, what's happening? Am I the only one who doesn't know? The things that Father said when he made that toast to you. It wasn't that he'd had too much to drink. There's something back of it all. You must remember he's been ill for a long but time. But what he did to Michael? Did you know he intended to let him go? No, nor did Michael. I could see it from those a shock to him. Even though he did it very charmingly, he was really dismissing him as if... Why? What has Michael ever done to him? There are some things over which we have no control. When Father said you can get him back, what did he mean? Why did you leave the room? I felt ill. What are you trying to keep from me? Don't you know I've never felt close to Father since I was a child, until we went to Capri. You've been my whole family. You're the only one I can turn to. You know that. Can't you understand? We'll talk in the morning. We can't talk tonight. I'm scarcely able to... Won't you please help me? Something. My 
Monica. He gave it to you. Monica, don't touch me. He gave it to you. I'll have got to let go of me. Monica, come back. You've got to go and speak to Monica. There's nothing I can do to help her. At this moment, my only consideration is you. Brian, please. I should have known about this all along. I was a fool not to follow my first instincts when I got the letter. You've got to go and speak to Monica. I only want to talk to you. When I saw your face in there just now, I knew that the letter was true. So you've proved my case. Have I? Yes. And anything I can say? I'm only concerned with the truth. You don't know the truth. I know that you're in love with him. What else? That's not true. <laughs> You think you're very clever, but you'll find that you've made one mistake. I'm a professional. I've dealt with these cases in the courts. However, there was no need to build up this evidence. You did it for me. Your actions were a confession of guilt. So I proved my case. What a contrast to the last time I saw you in court. You were defending a woman, a woman you didn't know. And now you've turned prosecutor against your own wife. Also, a woman you don't know. That day in Aylesbury, I had made up my mind to tell you that our unsuccessful marriage was ended. Yes. It had ended a long time before, when I found out that all your thoughts, all your time, all your devotion were given to your work. The uglier word is ambition. You call it ambition, to wish to defend humanity, to see that justice is done? Does your humanity and justice only apply to strangers? Don't question me. I'm not on trial. Are you so sure of that? Am I the only imperfect person? We'd only been married a short time when I found out that neither I nor your child meant anything to you. So after a few years, I stopped trying. Monica had grown up. She no longer needed me. Our marriage had ended a long time before I met Michael. I don't care to hear. You said you were concerned with the truth, so you must hear the truth. Michael is the kindest, most decent man I I've ever known. I told you I don't want to hear about him. I have nothing to be ashamed of. Milady. Milady. Monica. She's gone. Gone. Wait here for me. Is Mr. Barclay in? Yes, my lady. He's in Sir Brian's chambers. Thank you. Kathy. Monica's gone. What happened? Everything I've been afraid of. We think she's gone to Mary Benson's at Edgeworth. You must go after her now. There isn't a minute to lose. There's no point in my seeing her, now that she knows. Don't you love her? Yes. Then go after her. It will take courage. But think what she's going through. This has hurt her so cruelly. She wouldn't listen to me. Make her listen. This needn't be disaster unless we let it. My dear, I beg you to go. My car is downstairs. Take that. Go after her, and when you found her, make her marry you at once. Kathy, I don't believe she'll ever forgive me. She will. She loves you. That's all that matters. Make her see that's all that matters. I'll try and tell her what you've said. No. Don't tell her I said you. Never speak of me or the past. Put it behind you, both of you. Someday I... I 
hope she knows how good you are. Barclay took the car, my lady. Yes, I know. Good night, my lady. Good night. My little girl, I'm so happy for you. Thank you, Nanny dear. May I offer my congratulations, sir? Oh, thank you, Simmons. My best wishes, Mr. Michael. You're both very lucky. Oh, Nanny. Oh. I know I'm the lucky one. Not as lucky as I. Oh, you can argue that out later. Good heavens, we've only 20 minutes to catch the train. I'll go and tell Sir Brian and her ladyship. No, I... I want to see my father. All right, my dear. I saw the car outside. My darling. Michael, good of you to come. Hello, Brian. I've just got things. Cook and the girls will want a glimpse of you. I'll go and see them. What time's your train? About a quarter of an hour. Thank you. Did you ask for me? No. Well, there are, there are so many things we might say. Perhaps it's fortunate we have so few minutes. Monica and I will be gone for several months, so time will have every opportunity. Goodbye, Monica. Goodbye. 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 You'll never catch your train. Darling, we must hurry. Goodbye, Daddy. You will say goodbye to Kathy. I'm afraid there isn't time. I'll go out to the car, will you? I didn't want to get away. You're all in Scotland, isn't it? Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Have a nice trip, Miss Monica. She's me. I'd better come and see her. Didn't she look sweet? I like her. Is everything aboard? I hope so. Well, you're sure you've got the tickets? Yes, quite sure. I remember on our honeymoon, I forgot the tickets. <laughs> Goodbye, my love. Goodbye. Good luck, Michael. Goodbye, Brian. All right, then. Kathy!
Let's get on the pavement. Darling, you'll miss your train. 